Hello and welcome to the show. Melania Trump reopened the Washington Monument on Thursday, but her giant pair of scissors failed to cut the red, white and blue ribbon during the opening ceremony. Surrounded by fourth graders from a local elementary and officials from the interior department, the first lady joined the others to make the cut, but was left holding the ribbon after her scissors didn't work. Melania Trump laughed off the incident, waving her scissors with uncut ribbon in the air. She also took a ceremonial first ride to the top of the monument as part of the reopening after the historic landmark was closed for more than three years to repair damage to its structure and the elevator. She spent about 15 minutes on the upper level where she met with local grade school students who were the monument's first public visitors. The first lady wearing a white Prada dress and white heels with colourful stripes handed out every kid in the outdoors for grade park passes which offer the students free admission to the national kids or oh, national parks students from Amidon Bowen Elementary School in southwest Washington DC got the free passes and offered her a group hug in return she made no remarks during the five minute opening ceremony but greeted the kids with high fives and handshakes the children were excited to see her jumping up and down and shrieking at her arrival William P, nine years old, told the first lady he was never going to wash his clothes again after meeting her. Reporters were not allowed to accompany her to the top of the monument, where she would be able to gaze out at the National Mall and the White House, which sits across the street from the monument. Jeffrey Rainbold, the superintendent of the National Mall and Monuments, did accompany Melania Trump and told the Daily Mail he was looking forward to showing her the view of her house. He told reporters afterward that the school kids were excited to see the first lady and told her how they watched her motorcade drive from the White House to the monument for the opening. There were a lot of excited screams when she got up there, he noted. They, felt they walked her around to the different windows and were able to show her the different views, he said. They really connected with her and she was wonderful. He recalled that one student said, I can't wash my hands again, I just touched the first lady. Melania Trump in return told them about what it was like to live in the White House according to Rainbold. The Amidon Bowen Elementary School kids were told they would meet Melania Trump when they got to the monument about 10 minutes before her arrival on Thursday morning. We get to be on the news, one excited little boy said and waved to the cameras. They jumped around nervously when Melania Trump's motorcade pulled up with one saying to his friends, be cool. Interior Secretary David Bernhard also joined the First Lady for ceremony. Also participating in the ribbon cutting were Rain Bold, Assistant Secretary of the Interior Rob Wallace, and Acting National Park Service Director Dan Smith. Onlookers gathered on the National Mall while the ribbon was cut, awaiting their chance to go to the top after the official opening was complete. Rain Bold said the public tickets for Thursday were gone within an hour. Tickets are free to the public. The Washington Monument was closed for three years for repairs, including fixing its elevator and shoring up its structure. It's been tested, Rainbold said, of the elevator before the First Lady got on board. Before it officially closed, the monument had been shut down on and off for more than five years since the August 23, 2011 earthquake that struck the nation's capital and the rest of the eastern seaboard. The quake caused damage to it and the Washington National Cathedral. Between 2014 and 2016, the elevator to the top of the 555-foot marble and granite monument broke down 24 times, often stranding visitors. It was closed fully for repairs in 2016. The monument honours George Washington, the nation's first president, and is one of the most recognisable landmarks on the National Mall, an obelisk that towers over the city's landscape. It averaged 500,000 visitors a year before it closed. The Washington Monument's cornerstone was laid July 4, 1848, at a ceremony attended by President James K. Polk and then-Representative Abraham Lincoln. Its observatory at the top offers the best view of the city with the National Mall, the White House and the US Capitol building all in its sight lines. The earthquake caused numerous cracks to form in the obelisk, which was the tallest man-made structure in the world when it was completed in 1884 until it was eclipsed by the Eiffel Tower. It remains the tallest structure in Washington. 
Surveillance a video taken the day of the quake and later released by the park service showed the spire shaking violently. Daylight could be seen through some of the cracks, the largest of which was reported to be at least four foot long and about an inch wide. The total repair cost of $11 million was funded by taxpayer dollars and the donation from billionaire benefactor David Rubenstein, who stepped in with a $7.5 million gift to help fund the work. Rubenstein, the co-founder of the Carlyle Group, is worth an estimated $2.6 billion. He was at the Washington Monument on Tuesday for a personal tour and ride to the top, Reinbold said. I had a special trip up in the elevator and it was interesting when you're at the top of the monument with him and you look out over DC and you see how many things he's had a hand in. And so as a leader and in patriotic philanthropy, he's unparalleled. He's done amazing, amazing things to help us renovate some of these American treasures, he said. A history buff, Rubenstein is among the billionaires who have pledged to give at least half their money to philanthropic causes in their lifetime. Thank you.